As many as 500 civilians might have been killed in an attack on the Al Ali uh, Arab Hospital in Gaza. Uh, this happened since the last time we spoke to you. The US President Joe Biden, the leader of the free world, is in Israel to reiterate support for uh, Israel's position and Israel's offensive and Israel's defense or right to defend itself. Um, but very little happening on the humanitarian front, the crisis, the catastrophe, the disaster, however many words you want to use for it to describe what's happening in Gaza at the present moment, uh, not enough. It's a difficult situation uh, that unfortunately global leadership has not come to terms with. A second UN resolution has been rejected, vetoed by the United States at the same time as Joe Biden is in Israel uh, reiterating his support and also trying to play both sides of the story. Uh, we'll talk to Anish about the latest developments from Gaza, from Israel and from on the diplomatic front uh, as well. Uh, and we also have a very important other story to talk about today, which is to do with the pandemic treaty. As the world still struggles to recover from COVID-19, there is no consensus on how information, knowledge uh, will be shared and how intellectual property rights are becoming a barrier towards the access to uh, vaccines, to healthcare uh, around the world uh, for those who do not have a say in the subject. You're watching Daily Debrief coming to you from People's Dispatch. We are again, once again, reminding you that we're coming to you in this ad hoc format uh, because our facilities and the studio that we normally operate from, uh, we are unable to access at this present moment because of a crackdown on Indian, uh, by Indian authorities. Uh, but take a second anyway to support the work that we do and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right, as many as 500 people or more might be killed uh, in an overnight raid on the Alali hospital, a hospital that was targeted, I suppose, uh, for whatever reasons it was. Um, Anish has been covering events in Gaza from October 7th onwards consistently on daily debrief, and he's with us. Uh, and I want to take this time to sort of bring him in as well directly so that he can correct me uh, if I'm wrong on any of the things that I mentioned. Uh, but Joe Biden being in the region, Anish, is a significant development. And uh, as the, as we've said, leader of the free world and all of these things with the power to be able to do the things that he can, uh, why do his words sound a little bit less than what can be done in this present scenario. Yes, Siddhan. So what we need to understand from this uh, visit is that the primary purpose for President Biden was to uh, display unconditional support, pretty much unconditional support uh, for Israel's offensive on uh, Gaza. Uh, what they are trying to make it out to be is some kind of right to defense, but obviously completely uh, overlooking the blockade that has been there for the past 17 or so years and obviously uh, the kind of war crimes that have been committed in the past 10 days uh, even even if you discount uh, the attack that has happened on the Al-Hali hospital. So e in this span of time uh, you actually see the US uh, leadership being completely supportive. Right now they've only mellowed it down to consider some, uh, you know, humanitarian concerns that have been raised by its allies in the region, who, uh, by the way, have, uh, you know, cancelled uh, all meetings with Biden in the coming days. And that clearly shows uh, the displeasure, especially among the Arab countries, uh, regarding the U.S.'s stand when it comes to Gaza. Uh, we also need to look at uh, the content of uh, Biden's uh, statement. 
he has spoken about uh, you know israel uh, allowing aid through the rafa border which is the border between egypt and gaza and uh, that obviously is uh, might look like a breakthrough but obviously the uh, israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu actually also put a condition to this rider that none of the aid should go uh, reach hamas how are they going to distinguish between that uh, and how are they going to make sure that none of the aid uh, even if it's food and water reaches hamas uh, fighters is unclear and so we do not know we have we are yet to see if the borders are allowed to be uh, uh, you know reopened at this point in time it is uh, quite concerning because um, you know even in the past couple of days we have seen multiple attacks in south gaza that has killed many people including on the rafa border uh, pretty much you know making it clear that israel is, is in a no holds barred siege uh, when it comes to gaza at this current moment and obviously us completely overlooking like what is as you pointed out very significant uh, and very important is the reason why they vetoed the uh, you know the draft resolution that was presented by brazil which was watered down which called for a humanitarian pause unlike a uh, you know the russian uh, draft resolution which called for a humanitarian ceasefire a very sustained ceasefire uh, this uh, resolution was vetoed and the only reason and uh, us was the only one to veto it and the only reason they 